Let us pray. Our God and our Father, it is in the precious name of your darling Son, Jesus, we come to you this morning. We want to say thank you for being the God that you are. Thanking you, God, for watching over us through the still watches of last night. And early this morning, God, you touch us with the finger of love and cause us to rise in our light and our right minds with a blood and warm through our veins. We want to thank you for the activity of our lambs. Dear Lord, we pray that you'll forgive us for everything that we have always sinned, we have committed, known and unknown. We pray, oh God, that you will bless us. Have mercy upon us according to thy loving kindness, called the multitude of thy tender mercies, O God, blood of our transgressions. Dear Lord, we pray that you look down upon the one that is about to bring forth the word this morning. We pray that you unction us with power from on high, O God, that as he speak to us, our hearts may be blessed and courage to go every step of the journey. Lay, Lord, we pray that you open up our minds and our hearts, O God, that we be able to receive your word. The Lord, that as we receive your word, that we go to yonder byways and hedges, and that every sinner, O God, will look on us and see that Jesus is in us. Keep us in your will, Lord, and we'll be so mindful to give your name, the honor, the praise, and the glory, because it is in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God, and amen.
Good morning, Central. First, giving praise to God, to Pastor Ezel, to those who are ministers on the rostrum. Good morning to our Central Baptist Church family and those viewing by way of internet. We would like to welcome you to a wonderful and awesome worship experience. All visitors are asked to please stand and remain standing. All right, praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> On behalf of our pastor and entire church family, we welcome you to our worship services. We have a mandate from the master to lift up the name that is above every name. We pray that our services will be a blessing to you and that you will return again. May God's richest blessings be upon you. You may be seated. Amen. Please take note of the following upcoming events. Pastor Ezell will preach at Haskell Heights Progressive Baptist Church at 1320 Townsend Street today at 3 p.m. The Reverend Charles Epps Sr. is the pastor. The male chorus will accompany the pastor. Congratulations to Reverend Rick, Ricky Watkins on his sixth pastoral anniversary celebration to be held today at the Taylor Memorial Baptist Church at 3 p.m. The Gethsemane Baptist Congress of Christian Education March workshops will be held on Monday, March the 9th, and Tuesday, March the 10th, at 6 p.m. to 7.25 p.m. at the Second Nazareth Baptist Church. The church is located at 2336 Elmwood Avenue. The Reverend Dr. Johnny Noble is the pastor. Any members interested in participating participating in the Resurrection to Easter program to be held on Saturday, April the 4th, are asked to call or email the church to register by Monday, March the 16th. For additional information, please contact Sister Pat Wilson, or you may also see me after services. We just want to encourage all the parents to please, you know, Satan is busy. We need to keep your children active in church. So if you would like for them to participate, just see us right after this morning services. The Golden Voices will have rehearsal on Wednesday, March the 18th, and the 25th at 4 p.m. The, the Women's Builder of Faith Prayer Hour will be held on Saturday, March the 21st, from 9 to 11 a.m. The entire church family is invited to attend. There will be a focus group meeting for young adults ages 23 to 35 to discuss the formation of a young adult ministry and this will be held on Saturday, March the 21st at 11 a.m. in room 101. We need your input and suggestions. Please see Reverend Karen Phillips for additional details. Please contact the church office if you do not know your assigned deacon is. We want to make certain that every member is in contact with their deacon. Please view our website for additional announcements by logging on to www.centralbaptistcolumbia.org. Today's scripture is 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 1 through 6. Thank you for your attention, and have a blessed week. Is offering time in the house of the Lord. May we all stand and ask God's blessing. <laughs> the Bible declared that in Malachi the third chapter that will a man rob God, yet ye have robbed me. And he said, Wherein have we robbed thee? And he answered, Your tithes and your offerings. Tell us to bring our tithes into the storehouse that ever meet for thy people. And to prove me now here what said the Lord, if I would not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there be not room enough to receive it. Let us bow our heads.
Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus, Lord, we come saying thank you. Father, we thank you for just allowing us to have the privilege to bring back to you your tithes and our offering. Father, we ask now as we bring your tithes and our offering, let us come as cheer forgivers, because your words say you love a cheer forgiver. And Father, we ask that you use this for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. Bless each and every one who's able to give and those who wish to give. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will make a way for them to give also. In the blessed name of Jesus, we ask that you continue to bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Center pews face each other. Outside pews face the walls. And unite in the hands of the ushers. church say amen if you love the Lord say amen again if you know that God is in the blessing business and he's blessing us right now 
Do I have anybody here today that's blessed and highly favored? Do I have anybody that's walking in your prosperity and walking in the anointing that God has upon your life? Just give God a hand and clap of praise in here. Somebody else said, the Lord is keeping me, and the Lord is keeping me when? He's doing it right now. The Lord is blessing me, and the Lord is blessing me when? He's blessing me, shout right now. Somebody's body is wrecked with pain, and the Lord is healing me. And he's healing me, shout right now. I wish I had a few right now praises in here. Just shout right now all over this place. I dare you to open up your mouth and throw your hand up in the air and just shout right now. Not later on, not tomorrow, but right now that the Lord is blessing me and he's doing it. Shout right now. an awesome God. He can do any and everything but fail. Amen, somebody. We thank God for presiding officer this morning, Reverend Kenneth Wilson, for the strength and the spirit of the prayer by Reverend Winslow Harrison, for you, my brothers and sisters on this Christian journey, for all of those who turn their clocks up an hour ahead. Amen, somebody. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I, I can't lose any sleep time. And when I had to lose hours, it was a little tough, but God is still able. Amen. There's a sweet spirit in this place, and I know it is the spirit of the Lord. Today, as we leave our uh, house, I progressive, as I finish preaching that, we're going to travel to Taylor Memorial and celebrate with our son in the ministry, the Reverend Dr. Ricky Watkins. Amen who celebrate his sixth anniversary, and we're going to go there and celebrate with him. I told him as soon as we finish at Haskell Heights, we'll be there to celebrate with him. One of the challenges within churches that are growing and moving is that we got to continue to learn and grow. On yesterday, we had about 30 of our people to go to a state congress Christian education workshop at Benedict College, and they all had a great time. Amen. This week, our Get Seminary Annual Congress is in session. Our annual congress will be held on Monday and Tuesday evening at the Second Nazareth Baptist Church. And there are some congress workshops. Pull up that slide for me, Cartrell. I want you to look at the workshops that's going to be available. We ask you to avail yourself to go to the workshop. Um, in the minister's division, they've asked me to teach the minister's division. The topic I'm going to be teaching is preaching and pastoring with power in the present day. When I have a group of preachers, my first question to them is define what is preaching. Amen, somebody. You need to operationally define what you're teaching about. What is preaching? I surmise to you most of the stuff we label as preaching, preaching is showmanship and entertainment. I deal with the preachers on that on Monday and Tuesday, amen. We will also have a leadership division for the leaders within our church, our deacons, our trustees, our auxiliary, auxiliary leaders. Avail yourself to that workshop that will be taught by our moderator, Reverend Algeron Williams Sr. And then we have a Baptist doctrine division, instructor building and understanding of what we believe is Baptist. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Kevin Donaldson from Zion Baptist Church would teach that class. It's not enough to say I was born a Baptist, I was born a Baptist, I'm Baptist fed, and when I die, I'm going to be Baptist dead. That won't get you in. Amen, somebody. It's important to know why are you a Baptist? Why aren't you a Methodist? Why aren't you non-denominational? Why aren't you some other? Why are you a Baptist? Not enough that mama raised you in the church. You need to know what it, what it is that you believe as a Baptist. We have a woman's division. Dr. Cynthia Walter will be teaching that, empowering women for the present day ministry, and a youth division sees at the moment. So we encourage you to come out and to get involved in the class. Each night we will close with the word being preached to our Get Semi Educational Workshop. Whenever free training is available, you ought to take advantage of it. Amen. 
our church register annual within our guest seminary association we pay all fees so that all the training will be free to you so we invite you to come out and join us during that time you heard Deacon S. Yvette Taylor make the announcement concerning our Easter service on that Saturday, April the 4th. We're trying to do something a little bit different this year. I, I believe in the adage, you don't throw out the baby with the bath water. Amen, somebody. Sometimes I think we can drift a little bit too far away from tradition sometimes by trying to do everything modern and updated. We need to serve this present age, but we don't need to forget the bridge of waters. So this year, we're going to have our young people involved in our production, and we're going to have a slide on that where some of them can do the Easter recitation. I used to enjoy that when I was coming up. Amen, somebody. We done got completely away from it now. Amen. So we're going back to the basics. We're going to combine some of our tradition and what we do now, but your parents, uh, eight and nine years don't drive. Twelve and thirteen years don't drive, but they shouldn't be driving. Amen. You're going to have to get them in and get them involved. You would not allow them not to go to school, would you? They would, they would, they would come get you. If school is important, that spiritual foundation ought to be just important. Let's balance it together so that our young people will be involved. Yvette and, 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 and Sister Pat Wilson are working very hard for a comprehensive program that we can get everybody involved. So please, ma'am, please, sir, get with them after service. And now it's going to be gone all month long so we can make sure we get participation involved. And finally, I want you to know that I'm excited about our uh, Holy Week services beginning the Monday, I think that's the 31st, leading up until the 3rd. And I think that what we're going to do during that time, each night we will have a choir on and we will have a preacher each night. On Monday night, rendering music will be our Jubilee Choir as well as our male chorus. If the choirs that are on will conduct the devotion of that service. Our special guest that night will be Reverend Willie Douglas and the Zion Pilgrim Baptist Church right down there, of course, from the stadium off Bluff Road. On Tuesday night, the deliverance of praise choral ears will run the music. Our special guest will be Reverend Fleming O. McClinton and the Round Top Baptist Church of Blythewood. On Wednesday night, the voices of praise will deliver music. Our special guest on Wednesday night will be uh, Dr. Danny Swilly and the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church of Casey. And then I'm excited on Thursday night, on Thursday night, former pastor of the Central Baptist Church, the Reverend Ronald D. Bart will be preaching for us, and we will have the United Voices rendering music. I'm excited about Holy Week and what the Lord is going to do during that week. And Central, remember, any program that we have is up to our church to support the program. If other folks come, that's wonderful. We would love to have them. But our Holy Week services are and encourage us to spiritually empower us as we get ready to celebrate Resurrection Sunday. If, 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 if you don't get it right, you think it's going to be about the gifts and what you get. It's not about that. If the preacher does nothing on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, but get up and say he got up, then the preacher can sit down. If in that sermon, if you're not talking about him getting up, it's been missed somewhere. Because that's why we serve a resurrected Savior. So we're looking for a blessed time as we share on the occasion coming up. Let us prepare right now for our scripture reading. As Sister Beverly Adams come forward for our scripture reading, then we will follow by selection by our deliverance of praise, Carl is. Amen. Again, we want to thank Brother Cortland Thomas, and, and he's done a wonderful job of working with them on this second Sunday. Amen. We thank him so much. Brother Sam, little Sam, we thank y'all so much for a wonderful job. Let us stand in preparation for the reading of our scripture. Praise the Lord, saints. Uh, I'll be reading from the NIV, um, 1 Samuel 28, verses 1 through 6. And it says, Now it happened in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for war. 
to fight with Israel, and Anchor said to David, you surely know that you will go out with me to battle, you and your men. So David said to Anquish, surely you know what your servant can do? And Anquish said to David, therefore I will make you one of my chief guardians forever. Now Samuel had died and all Israel had lamented for him and buried him in Ramah, in his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the spirits out of the land. Then the Philistines gathered together and came and encamped at Shuman. So Saul gathered all Israel together and they encamped at Gebola. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. And Sik said, when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord said, not, and did not answer him either by dreams or by urine or by the prophets. Thus I have read 1 Samuel 28, verses 1 through 6, God's word for God's people.
silent and there is no answer. Oh, how we worship. Thank you so much, choir, for that selection. Beverly, thank you for leading us in the reading of scripture. Prior to embarking upon our text on today, let me welcome and share victory reports. Deacon, as Margaret Flores, it's so good to have you back in worship, sir. Just wave your hand right there. It's just good having you back in worship service. Amen. Did you get the message where I called you the other day just to check on you, see how you were doing? Well, thank you, ma'am. You look so well. Amen. Good to have you. Deacon S. Richardson, it's good to have you back, too. I know you've been out about in the weather. It's good to have you back in worship, sir. Raise your hand right there. God is a good God. Let's give God praise for all the wonderful things that God is doing. We solicit your prayers. One of our members of our church on last Sunday, we were talking after service and she was telling me how much she enjoyed the sermon, the word meant to her. I got a call around Wednesday, she had died. Folks, let me tell you, life is so short. I mean, Sister Brenda Myers, who sits right back there where you see Miss Murphy at eight o'clock service, she sits right on that corner. She was every Sunday at eight o'clock, she's right there. 
This past Sunday at 11 o'clock, she has a daughter here, Avery Miles, is Avery's mother. And Saturday at 11 o'clock, she came and she worshiped and praised God the whole while from beginning to the end of service. The end of service, she came and made her way to me and said, Pastor, that sermon was directed for me, and she just praised God. And when I got a call that said that she had passed in her sleep, absolutely blown away. But let me tell you, if God is going to call you home when he called you, I sure wanted to be after I worship him. <laughs> the way she worshiped God. Sunday, my God, my God. Her homegoing service are going to be tomorrow at 1 o'clock here at the Central Baptist Church. I tell you, life is so short. Live life to its fullest. Don't have any regrets. Don't have any grudges with somebody that you're holding right now. Leave all that stuff alone. Let all that stuff go, y'all. That, that doesn't matter, right? You want to see Jesus, and you want to see him for yourself. So we pray for her family. And in, in counseling, we have what we call anticipatory grief, where a person has been sick, trustee rakes for a long time. Then you got a chance to equip yourself. But when you just talk to them that night as a daughter, and the next morning she did, that's tough on only child. Her mama relocated here from Columbus, Georgia, to be with her. That's tough. Pray for Abram. Pray for that family. Amen. Let's lift them in prayer. And Vivian, you don't have to stand up as a visitor anymore when you come. You are honorary member of the Central Baptist Church, all right? Amen. Now, that's my brother Vivian from Camden. Amen, amen. There's a word from the Lord. 1 Samuel, the 28th chapter, I want to focus in on verse number 6. Verse number 6. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by urine, nor by prophets. Other words, Saul was in trouble. Saul called on the Lord, and the Lord said nothing to him. Have you ever been there? Saul had his back up against the wall. Enemies are getting ready to attack him. So what Saul said, I'm going to go to the Lord. I know where I can get a word. I can get a word from the Lord if I can't get a word from anywhere else. But the Lord said nothing to him. I just want to talk a little while today from this sermonic thought. When God is silent, When God is silent. When I was in seminary, my brothers and my sisters, I was introduced to the ministry of presence in a CP class for clinical pastoral education and the chaplaincy training program. The ministry of presence notes that you don't always have to say something. Sometimes just your presence is enough to be there for that person and know that you are with them. And that was a little difficult for me, being the shy, reserved person that I am. That when we would go into the hospital room for our visitations, rather than saying anything, they just wanted us to be still and sit there and practice the ministry of presence. In other words, I wanted to walk in the room and talk with the patient and do things with the patient. And one, one, one individual there, and I was getting ready to leave, I said, let, uh, let me hold your hand so we can pray. The, pray. the man looked at me and said, did I ask you for any prayer? I, I'm like, I didn't think folks had the actual prayer. I thought you just prayed. So the chaplain's report, they, they did this right up on me and said, well, you went into that room like you were the pastor of Central Baptist Church because your members know that you're going to pray for them. This man was in a hospital room. He happened to be a vet. He was angry and mad with God. He had lost his arm, lost his leg, and he was bitter and angry with God. And you come there and talk about let us pray. And the man asked you, did I ask you for prayer? 
I didn't practice the ministry of presence. I went in talking about let's do this and let's do that. So sometimes our silence is required and we don't have to say anything. Sometimes when someone has lost a love, when all you have to do is to go and you can just put your hand on their shoulder. You don't always have to say anything. Because sometimes I find that words are so inadequate. Sometimes we don't know what to say and we don't know how to say it, but just by being there, sometimes can be enough. Well, my brothers and sisters, it's because we live in a noise-oriented society. Very few of us, when we wake up in the morning, it's the noise. Many times it's alarm clock that wakes us up. Many times we turn on the television while we're getting dressed. Or we turn on the radio. When we get in the car, we have music going on in the car. We're in a noise-oriented society, so sometimes it's difficult for us just to be still and know that I am God, as the words say. I was at Richmond Memorial Hospital the other day. I was on the elevator, and I walked on the elevator when it opened, and we were giving it to go up, and everybody was looking up. Nobody wanted to say anything, like, don't talk to me. I won't talk to you. I'm getting on the elevator. Good morning. How you doing? It is it's a beautiful day. The Lord is mighty good. They're looking at me like I'm crazy, like I'm, I lost my mind because everybody was avoiding talking because everybody was silent. I want you to know that in this case, in our text on today, Saul, I mean, he experienced the very same thing in our text today because when he called on the name of the Lord, the Lord was silent. The Lord did not have an answer or did not give him an answer. What happens, my brothers and sisters, when God is silent? I don't have a problem with other people being silent, but what happens when God is silent? You hear other people talking about receiving their breakthrough. You've been praying and you haven't received yours yet. What happens when God is silent? You hear other people talking about walking in favor, walking in their anointing and see what the Lord is doing. But what happens when you are praying and that does not seem to be an answer to your prayer? What happens when you fasted all night long, had your face in the wall, calling on the name of the Lord, but it seems like God has turned a deaf ear? What happens when God is silent? I don't have a problem with my coworker being silent. I don't have a problem with a friend being silent. But I do have a problem when God is silent. Oh, I don't know how Saul felt, but when, when your back is up, up against the wall, when you don't know where to turn, and when you've done all you can do, and you call on the name of the Lord, and somebody says you just wait on him, that he's a God you can't hurry, that he's a God you don't have to worry, that he may not show up when you want him, but he's always on time. And that really sounds good, but what if he's not on time for you yet? What if he's not shown up for you yet? What if you've been praying and can't get a breakthrough? What if you've been praying and can't get a miracle? What if you need the Lord and it seems like that the Lord is nowhere to be found? I wish I had a witness in here. Sometimes we get caught up in church language. Sometimes we know how to say the right things. and Sometimes we know how to say the right cliches that God is good all the time and that all the time is good. Now sometimes in your life you don't feel like God. God is being too good to you. There are some times in your life when the load gets heavy and sometimes in your life when you feel like giving up on the battle but you can't talk to everybody because they'll make you feel like you don't have a personal relationship with God. They'll make you feel like you shouldn't question God but every now and then no matter who you are your foundation will crumble around you and you'll call on the name of the Lord and the Lord is nowhere to be found and God is a Pray answering God, but he has not answered your prayer. God will make a way out of no way, but he's not making a way for you. God will open a door for you, but he's not opening a door your way. Do I have anybody here that ever felt like that before? Is there anybody in the house this morning that sometimes you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, and you just need a breakthrough? You just need a word. You just need some hope. You just need some encouragement, and you can't go to everybody, but you call on the name of the Lord and you still can't find an answer. What happens when God is silent? Job 23 and 3 said, Oh, that I knew where I might find him 
that I might come even to his seat. That's what Job is saying. 2389, Job said, Behold, I go forward. He's not there. I go backwards, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he worked, but I cannot behold him. He hides himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. Ah, oh, Job said, so All the stuff that I've gone through, I lost everything that I've had. I lost my health and lost my wealth. My wife told me to curse God and die. Lost my children and, and, and then my friends came and said I must have done something wrong to be in the shape that I am. I stopped by to tell you, you don't have to do anything wrong. Sometimes you just got to trust God no matter where you are. See, sometimes folks feel like when you're going through something, it's because you had to do something. But God says, sometimes I'll take you through. So when I bring you out, it'll be nobody but God getting the credit for whatever you've been through. I've learned how to lean and depend on the Lord. I've learned that he is my friend and the Lord is my God. So I stop by to tell somebody, I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but just hold on a little while longer. I know it's tough for you right now, but keep your hand in the Lord's hand. I know you're going through right now, but I got good news for you. I see you in the future, and your future looks so much brighter. It's hard to praise God when you're going through, but I stop by to tell you, just look toward the hill. From whence cometh your help, that all of your help will come from the Lord. And I believe I got somebody here today that you just need a breakthrough in your life right now. Is there anybody here? that's been struggling for a little while and you just need the Lord to show up for you right now. I stop by to tell you just keep the faith that God will see about you and that God will come to your rescue. I believe I got a few witnesses in here can testify there's no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. How many know he will? I said I know he will. That he will do the same thing for you. Sometime in the midst of what you're going through, you just got to thank God for what God has already done. Sometimes we start asking God to do something else. But can I give you a secret? If you just stop where you are and thank him what he's already done. When the praise started reaching up to him, then he'll start blessing you that much more. I believe I got somebody in the house this morning that's getting ready to thank God for what the Lord has already done. I want to thank you, Lord. How you've already blessed me. I want to thank you, Lord. How you already kept me. I want to thank Thank you, Lord, that you never left me. I want to thank you, Lord, that you'll wipe tears away from my eyes. I want to thank you, Lord. You'll make my enemies behave. I want to thank you, Lord. You'll supply all of my needs. I want to thank you, Lord. Your grace is sufficient. I want to thank you, Lord. Your strength is made perfect in my weakness. Oh, I wish I had somebody here. Just want to thank you, Lord, for what the Lord has already done. I want to thank you, Lord. You kept me on Monday. I want to thank you, Lord. You kept me on Tuesday. I want to thank you, Lord. You kept me Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I want to thank you, Lord. You kept me all day Saturday morning, all night Saturday night. You kept me early Sunday morning, and you're keeping me right now. Is there anybody here can thank the Lord for blessing you right now? Can thank the Lord for keeping you right now? Can thank the Lord for holding you right now? Can thank Thank the Lord for lifting you right now. Is there anybody here just can thank the Lord for right now? Is there anybody here that we serve a good God? Is there anybody here that he's great and greatly to be praised? I need about 25 praises here that I thank God for being in the number, for thank God for being in the house, for thank God for being clothed in your right mind. I thank God for the blood. right now but what happens when God is silent even when God is silent the first thing I want you to know you have the promise of his presence even when he's silent he's still with us you have the promise of his presence watch this verse 1 said it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel all right, the Philistines and Israel are getting ready to fight. And Achish said unto David, Know thou assuredly that thou shalt go with me to battle thou and thy men. 
And David said to Achish, surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Achish said to David, therefore will I make thee keeper of my head forever. Now Samuel was dead. Verse 3, all Israel had lamented and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirit and the wizards out of the land. Samuel was dead, I said. Saul's great woes or problem began with the loss of Samuel. Israel and Saul could ill afford to lose this man of God. He was a pillar of the nation, but neither Israel nor Saul respected Samuel as they ought when he was alive. Let me put a footnote there. Don't wait until your loved ones pay. I like the way the singer said, give me my flowers. <laughs> while I can yet still smell them. Hmm? Uh, Sometimes we don't appreciate somebody when they're here with us until they're no longer around with us. Only when he was gone did they realize his great value. Every age has that problem. They do not realize the value of spiritual opportunity until they lose them. So now we found that Saul became afraid. Because look at the size of the Philistine army. He looked at the size of Israel. And he became so afraid right now. He couldn't call on Samuel for advice right now. But I stopped by to tell you that even in the midst of it, even when God was silent, when God didn't say anything, uh, we have the promise of his presence. I stopped by to tell you, I don't know what you're going through, but the Lord is right there with you. You have the promise of his presence. I don't know what's weighing you down right now, but you have the promise of the Lord's presence. I like what words say, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. It's good to know that the battle is not mine, but that the battle is the Lord. And the Lord is with me in the midst of the battle. Even if I find myself in the fire, the Lord is right there with me in the midst of my fire. So I stop by to encourage somebody today. Even when the Lord is silent, I want you to know that he's still with you. I want you to know it doesn't matter how heavy the load is. The Lord told me to tell you I'm still with you. It doesn't matter who's with you and who against you. If God be for us, he's more than the world is against us. The Lord told me to tell you, I'm still with you. You had some friends that didn't stick with you. When things got difficult, they left you alone. But the Lord told me to tell you, there is a friend that'll stick closer than a brother. I stopped by to tell you that the Lord is with you. Deaconess Flores, I reminded you when I came to visit you in the hospital, that late at night when the lights are cut off, when family has gone home, when the nurses are not coming around at the time, that you're not by yourself, because you have the Lord is still with you. I don't know about you, but that's good news right there, that the Lord is still with you. Oh, I wish I had somebody here that know that the Lord is still with you. I don't care what you're dealing with right now. It may be too hard for you, but it's just right for God, because the Lord is still with you. I stopped by to tell you the Lord has not brought you this far in order to leave you. That the Lord is still with you. How do you know David? David said because the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. That the Lord is still with you. I feel something in here that somebody needs to know early this morning that the Lord is still with you. Somebody received some bad news this way, but the Lord is still with you. Somebody got some finances that are all jacked up right now, but the Lord is still with you. Somebody body is wrecked with pain, but the Lord is still with you. So I have a witness in here that your testimony is that I'm not by myself, that the Lord is with me. I'm not going to give up. The Lord is with me. I'm not going to throw in the tower. The Lord is with me. Oh. I stopped by to tell somebody, even when God is silent, I want you to know you have the promise of his presence. Oh, that's good news, my brothers and sisters. 
The second thing I want to remind you of today, not only do you have the promise of his presence, but you have the promise of his power. The Philistines gathered their armies for warfare. The Philistines came at a good time for them. See, David was in Philistia, Samuel was dead, and Saul was in a bad spiritual condition. Watch this. Satan knows when to attack God's people. Huh? Let, let's look at this picture again, right? Uh, David was in Phil Philistia, Samuel was dead, and Saul was in bad spiritual condition. When you're at your weakest, when you're at your lowest, when you're at the most vulnerable time in your life, Satan knows when to attack. Ah, uh, but even when Satan attacked, you got the promise of the power of God. See, the Philistines pitched in Shunem. The location of the Philistines was deep into the territory of Israel. As such, it emphasized the weakness of Saul's reign. Now watch this. Where the Philistines camped, Saul and Gabor with the Israelite could see the Philistines from where they were. They saw how imposing they were. They saw how large their army was. And now David was with them. So Saul assumed that David was going to join in with them and try to kill him because many times he had tried to kill David himself. Let me give you a news fact. Somehow when people rise up against you, it's not because you've done anything against them. It's because they know what they've done to you. And they think that you're going to try to do it back to them. But tell them, pastor told me to go to Joseph. Because Joseph said what man meant for evil. God will take what was meant for evil. And God will turn it around. And he'll work it out for your good. Huh? Folks in relationship, you ain't got to be breaking nobody's windows. You ain't got to be in the key in nobody's car. Amen, somebody. You don't have no business going through nobody's cell phone. It ain't your phone. Whatever's going on, God will reveal it to you. You don't have to be a private eye. You don't have to be a detective. You, you just got to be comfortable with you. Yeah. All this stuff, cutting tired, key in the car, throwing the clothes out the door. So everybody can see him. What is all that about? If you can't get a loan, move on. It don't take all that drama. Life is too short. Now, so he assumed that David was going to try to get, get even. But meanwhile, Saul found himself in a desperate situation. He couldn't call on Samuel. The Philistines were camped in Shunem in the valley of Jezreel. Saul was at Gibor five miles north, and he was afraid. Oh, my brothers and sisters. And the Lord refused to answer Saul's inquiry. When Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was so afraid. He had good reason to be troubled. Just the location of the Philistines would cause him enough to tremble. Saul also knew he could not defeat the Philistines. That was too many and too strong, and he was too few and too weak. Achish said unto David, No doubt or surely that thou shalt go out with me to battle. David said, Surely thy servant shall know what the servant can do. Saul had run off David, and now David was living in the very land that was attacked in Saul. Though David did not actually fight Israelite, Saul would see him as a traitor and expect him to fight because of what Saul had done to him. Furthermore, David's gathering at work as a soldier predicted bad thing for Saul's army. Yes, in the midst of being afraid, I want you to know that you have the promise of God's power. I stopped by to tell you, God will fight your battle for you. You have the promise of God's power. He gives power to the faint. And that them that have no might, he will increase your strength. You have the promise of God's power. As surely God will more than conquer us through him that love us. You have the promise of God's power. His word said, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from that wicked way. Then when I hear from heaven and I will heal the land. 
you have the promise of God's power. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for God's power. I'm thankful for soul-saving power. I'm thankful for wonder-working power. I'm thankful for miracle-working power. Ah, when you have God's power, the enemies might roll up against you, but your enemies can't do you any harm. I don't know about you, but it's something good by having the power of God. Well, I'm reminded of a little boy. And this little boy father bought him a toy for Christmas. You remember the toys that they used to buy? They called him the little pogo man. And what happened is that every time you stand him up and you hit him and knock him down, he'll bounce right back up. So then the little boy took both of his fists and he hit him double times and knocked him down. When he hit him double time and knocked him down, it bounced right back up again. And somebody questions that what seems to be the problem. Why does this toy always bounce back up again? So I inspected the toy and found out it was nothing about the toy on the outside. But the toy had something on the inside. And what the toy had on the inside gave him the ability to bounce back up when he was knocked down again. I stopped by to tell you we got some survivors in here who got something on the inside. That when the enemies knock you down, you can bounce right back up. To have a witness in here. We got some survivors in here. You've been down, but you're not out right now. And you can still give God the praise and the glory. Can I get a little help in here? That somebody here ought to realize what the Lord can do. There have been many times that the devil has knocked you down, but you bounce right back up again. Do I have anybody here tell the devil you should have kept me down while you had me down, but you done brought me back up now so I can still give your name the praise and I, I can still give you the glory because you're worthy to be praised. I wasn't ready to close right there, but since the musicians are closing me, I might as well go ahead and get with them since we're getting ready to close right here at this time. Time. Third and finally, I want you to know you got the promise of his provision. Do I have a witness in here? Is there anybody know that God will provide? Well, I stopped by to tell you that when David inquired of the Lord, the Lord didn't try to say anything, but I stopped by to tell you that God delays are not necessary God's denier. Sometimes you just got to be patient and wait on the Lord. Do I have anybody here that knows that even when God is silent, you you're still willing to wait on the Lord. Why I said, shall you wait on the Lord? Cause they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Can I get a witness here? Somebody say, mount them up. They shall mount up with wings of eagle. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk on not faint. Do I have anybody here that's praying with men when God is silent I know you still on the throne when God is silent I know you still heals and answer prayer when God is silent he'll still fight the battle cause the battle is none mine but the battle is the law to have anybody here that's willing to trust in the law with all thy heart and lean not in thy own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he will I said I know you will That he will direct your path I ought to have somebody here That you may have called on the name of the Lord Just hold on and God will I said he will I said he will He'll come to your rescue Do I have anybody here Who's a living witness That you tried him him for yourself and the Lord will he'll come to your rescue I stop by to tell you that even when God is silent that the Lord will provide to have a witness in here you don't know whether you're going to have the money to pay your bill but you know God will provide 
Because he said, I'll supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. We don't know why our loved ones die, but we know God will provide. Because he said to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. We know God will provide. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. If I go, I will prepare a place for you and receive you unto myself that where I am, ye may be all. So, how I many you know that God will provide? We can only put our children in the hand of the Lord and trust that the Lord will take care of them. He said, train them up while they're young. And when they're old, they will not depart. Because God will provide. Sometimes your body is wrecked with pain. I don't know why some folks have cancer. I don't know why some folks deal with chemo. But I know that Lord will provide. He said, by my stripes will you be healed I wish I had a witness in here who your testimony is that the Lord will provide to have anybody here that know that sometimes God is silent but God is still working it out for your good that all things somebody shout all things shout all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose because God God will provide. Can I ask a question in here? Has the Lord provided for anybody in here? Has the Lord brought anybody out? Has the Lord made a way for anybody? Has the Lord healed anybody? Has the Lord picked you up? Turn you around. Place your feet on solid ground. Because the Lord will provide. How many know he will? Has he done it for anybody in here? I ought to have a witness in here that the Lord will provide. He'll get me up off my sick bed. The Lord will provide. He'll put food on my table. The Lord will provide. He'll put a roof over my head. The Lord will provide. Is there anybody here? Know that God will. I said He will. I said He will. Hey, hey, hey. I said He will. I said He will. Let me hear you say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Open your mouth like a minute. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say oh. Say yes. Say yes, say God will. When God is silent, we all would experience what Saul felt. Saul went to God when he was in trouble and the Lord said nothing. But guess what? Saul previously had dishonored and disrespected God. We can't dishonor him, disrespect him. Then when we get in trouble, run to him and want him to rescue us. Huh? Huh? Somebody's been praying. Somebody's been calling on the name of the Lord. And he has not moved according to your timetable. You're looking for him to move in chronos, chronological order. That's man's timetable. God moved in kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S. That's God's timetable. A year with the, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. He doesn't move according to our timetable. He moves according to his own timetable. So while you're going through, while you're praying, fasting, it may be over a child, it may be over a job, it may be over a relationship, it may be over somebody within your family. While you're praying and, and it does not seem like God is responding, I want you to know he has promised you his presence even when he's silent. See, he don't, he don't have to say anything. His presence is enough. You have his presence 
Whatever your situation is, I want you to you know you're not alone. God told me to tell you, I'm in it with you. And I'm in it to win it for you. <laughs> you have his presence. Not only do you have his presence, you have the promise of his power. Sometimes things can get so hard, you can't handle it. I don't care how much you flex and go to the gym. You can't handle it. Man, there are some stuff that will bring you to your knees. You, 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 just, you can't handle it. But you have the promise of his power. The Greek word for power is dunamis, which comes from the English word dynamite. You don't know how bad you are when you're a child of the king. You got something, uh, something that'll make you explode when the enemy tries to attack you. Because you have dynamite power within you, you need to say to the devil, roll up on me if you want to. You pick the right one. Roll up on me. You bad, come on devil. I'm going to give you an invitation. You pick the right one. You explosive. You don't know how explosive you are as a child of the king. And third and finally, you got the promise of his provision. God said, I'll provide for you what you need. Whatever you need, God told me to tell you, take the word lack out of your vocabulary. L-A-C-K, a believer doesn't lack anything. Whatever you need, God is supplied. <laughs> Take the word lack out of your vocabulary, right? Take the word luck out of your vocabulary. Lack and luck are not things that believers believe in. We stand on the promises and we stand on the word of God. God never falls short of his word. Heaven and earth might pass away, but the word of God will stand forever. Just stand on his word. Stand on his word. When Saul saw great enemies before him, he got afraid. Then he's going to run to the Lord. Inquired of the Lord. And God went silent on him. Didn't say anything to him. Wouldn't respond to him. But he's with us every step of the way. Don't worry about folks not speaking to you. You get to worry when you can't hear from God. I can deal with folks not speaking. Huh? But you know what I like when we open doors and say, I like going to folks who I know upset with me. I do. I like hugging them. I like telling them good morning. That's the kind of person I am. I, I don't let nothing bother me too long. You see what I'm saying? You better not stress the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't get bent out of shape over the small stuff. Everybody's not going to like you. You can't make everybody like you. I don't care what you do. Some folk just will not like you. Grow up, get over it, and move on with your life. You can't change something. But you can be the best you you can be. You can be happy with you. You can be satisfied with you. You can love you. You can take care of you. You can treat you well. You can treat yourself now if don't nobody else do it. What happens when God is silent? So as you go through this week, you run in this situation, know that God is with you. He promised you his presence. He promised you his power. The battle is not your. The battle is the law. He promised you his power. And he promised you his provision. I'm just crazy and grateful enough that I believe that whatever I need, my God will provide. And he will not only supply my needs, but he'll meet my needs. Amen, somebody? Let us stand. Let us stand. There may be someone here today up under the sound of my voice. Want to step out from where you are. Give the pastor your hand. But give
give God your heart. May you come by letter, by your Christian experience, by a candidate for baptism. We serve a whosoever will God. Whosoever will, let them come. Maybe you've been attending the church for a while, trying to make up your mind whether or not you want to be a member. Today is your day. Walk by faith and not by sight and trust where God is leading you. As the choir leads us in our invitation to him, learning to lean, will you come? Yes, yes, yes. Will you lean on him? Say it, say it, find him. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm learning. Say it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm learning. Yes, yes, will you come, my Lord? Yes, yes. Oh, I'm finding. Yes, yes. It's prayer time when you make your way to the altar for prayer. Make your way to the altar. 